If you are interested in any of my tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator or simply interested in supporting the channel, consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future guides that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. Hello everybody and welcome back to a very interesting episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Today I am going to show you guys how to use ChatGPT as your first officer and much much more. It is important to note in this video that I have the payware version of ChatGPT. I do have a monthly subscription to it. It's not the most advanced, just the first basic that you buy. I can't remember what the price point is. I want to say it's right around $20 a month if I remember correctly. But I'm going to show you guys how cool of a tool it can be, especially if you're learning new aircraft. You can use ChatGPT to either read off checklist, do a challenge, and uh, um, confirm you know, style of checklist reading. It can be your first officer. It can get you meet our information. It can do quite a lot. Now it can't directly interact with, interact with the sim as far as I'm aware, but I wanted to show you guys because I've been having a lot of fun with it. And the beautiful part about chats AI is that the way that it speaks to you is very natural. So it can really enhance the immersion and it can help you with a lot of things, especially if you're flying in virtual reality and you find yourself constantly fiddling with checklists. You can leave chat up and running in the background while you are flying. So let's go ahead and demonstrate. Um, you guys are gonna hear me talk to chat as if it's a real person. Um, I don't mind RPing guys. I will absolutely role play as if he's a real person. And uh, you guys will hopefully enjoy this. This is kind of a fun way. I just sort of popped in my head the other day on how to, you know, start playing around with it, giving him different commands. And I figured, you know what, today I'm going to give it a shot for flying. So let's go ahead and jump into the seat. And I'm going to start chat up. And it's just chatgpt.com, in case you guys are interesting. And we are in his voice mode. So from here on out, guys, here we go. Good afternoon, chat. We are live on the YouTube channel, and uh, we're going to demonstrate your incredible capability to help us out in flight simulation. Absolutely. Let's do this. I'm excited to be here and help you show everyone how we can run through a Cessna 172 checklist together. That's Let's it. get started. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and start with, let's jump right into the before start checklist with a challenge and confirm methodology, keeping it simple and short. Absolutely. Let's dive in. We'll keep it nice and straightforward. Seats looked. Set. Fuel selector. Both. Both. Set. Fuel shuttle valve. In. In. Mixture, idle cutoff. Idle cutoff. Propeller area, clear. Clear. Master switch, on. Master's on. Beacon, on. Beacon on. Brottle. Open a quarter inch. Quarter inch. Mixture. Set to rich, then idle cutoff. Complete. Perfect. That's the before start checklist all done. Nicely done. All right, let's start it up. Absolutely, let's get that engine fired up. We'll move right onto the engine start check wrist whenever you're ready. Begin. All right, let's kick it off. First step, master switch on and confirmed. Confirmed. All right, make sure to rich. Rich. Perfect. Next, throttle set about a quarter inch open. Throttle set. Right. Now turn the key to start and let's get that engine running. Good start. 
continue with the next phase. Absolutely. Let's keep rolling. We'll move right into the after start checks next. So once that engine's stable, we'll get to it. Begin. All right. Let's dive into the after start checklist. First up, oil pressure. Check that it's in the green. Green. Perfect. Next, avionics switch. Avionics on. All right, avionics on. Now let's just check your fuel gauges and make sure they're indicating correctly. Tanks are good. Perfect. That covers the after start checks. You're all set for the next phase whenever you're ready. Can you give me the MEDAR information for Tucson International? It's your thing. The current METAR for Tucson International shows clear skies and about 28 degrees Celsius out there. Got the altimeter in inches. Got it. The current altimeter setting at Tucson International is 30.04 inches of mercury. Wow. And can you give me the full METAR information? So that's going to be um, directly from the Tucson International ATIS. Sure. Here's the full METAR from Tucson International. It's currently clear skies. Temperature is around 39 degrees Celsius. Winds are from the north at about 5 knots. And the altimeter setting is 29.94 inches of mercury. Let me know if you need anything else. Oh, wait. Woo. 2994. Yeah, that's definitely a warm day out there at 39 degrees. And, yep, altimeter 2994 is what we've got. Let me know if you need any more details. All right. Let's move forward to the next stage of the checklist. I believe that'd be before taxi, correct? Exactly. You got it. We'll roll right into the before taxi checklist now. So let's get that going. Ready when you are. All right, let's do it. Before taxi, brakes, release, and test. Let me know when that's done. All right, let's stick with the challenge and complete. Goody. Let's keep it strictly in that format. Brakes. Blake instruments. Check and zip. Set. Perfect. Radios set and tuned. Complete. All right. Taxi light on. Taxi light on. Perfect. That's the before taxi checklist complete. Ready to roll whenever you are. All right. Let's go ahead and pause there, chat. Sure. We'll pause right here. Just let me know when you're ready to continue, and um, we'll pick it up from there. All right, guys. So you can see that there are certain things that you do have to be very specific on. So when I first asked for the altimeter... 
I don't know if he gave us from middle of Tucson, the you know the weather station, or if he gave us directly. Now we said Tucson International, but if you saw initially, we got the three points. There's a four, but then when I asked for it directly from the ATIS, I can confirm that that's also what I was seeing on the Google website. Okay, when I went to the actual ATIS page, so you want to be very specific in certain aspects. And you'll learn this as you go on. You'll learn to ask different questions. Like the second he said 3004, like it wasn't ridiculously high, but it sounded a little high. Okay, and then so I double checked it. And that's why I turned around and asked him again, can I get the, the altimeter from the ATIS? Okay, and that's when I got the correct altimeter. Okay, so you just there are certain things that you have to keep in mind. Um, but let's go ahead and push this a little bit further. Um, I'm in the process of redesigning a few things in the office right now, so I actually don't even have a throttle currently set up, but let's see if he can give us a taxi instruction to the correct runway. All right, chat, can you designate what the correct runway for the current winds are? Based on the current winds coming from about 0 20 degrees at 5 knots, the most suitable runway at Tucson International would likely be one of the runways oriented closest to that direction. So runway 11 left or 11 right would be a good match. All right, perfect. So uh, just for your information, chat, this is one of the cool things about you is that I know that we can teach you. Uh, I don't know if you have the most updated information, but 11 left is actually no longer the runway. It is now designated run runway 12 and runway 11 right has been closed. It is no longer an active runway for Tucson International. Got it. Thanks for the update. That's exactly the kind of thing I can keep in mind going forward. So runway 12 it is, and we'll skip mentioning the old 11R from now on. Thanks for teaching me. All right. And can you give me uh, correct taxi instructions based on the airport chart to runway 11 or 12, excuse me. So based on the updated chart for Tucson International, to get to runway 12, you'll typically taxi via taxiway alpha. So you'll just follow the main taxi route along alpha down to the end and that'll line you right up for runway 12. Do you know what the exit point from alpha is to get to the end of runway 12? And can you give me those instructions in ATC format coming from the general aviation uh, ramp directly in front of the old tower? This is a lot, so we're going to see how he responds to this one. That was a pretty challenging question. Absolutely. Here's how it would sound in ATC format, coming from the GA ramp near the old tower. You'd say something like, Tucson ground, your call sign at the GA ramp with information ATIS code, request taxi to runway 12. And ATC would likely respond, taxi to runway 12 via alpha, hold short at runway 12. So in short, you'll take taxiway alpha all the way and hold short at the end for runway 12. What is the ending runway designation? Alpha what? Alpha 6? Alpha 5? So, quick update. Actually, runway 12 at Tucson International is now accessed via Alpha 9 at the end. So, you taxi down Alpha and exit at Alpha 9 to line up with the runway. That will get you right you the threshold of runway 12. Perfect. Now... Can we do a simulation? Would you mind playing the role of air traffic control from this point forward? Absolutely. I'd be happy to switch roles and play ATC for you. Just let me know your call sign and we'll run the scenario from here. Let's just, for today's sake, let's play as if my call sign is simply overkill. All right, Overkill, I've got you loud and clear. Let's get into it. You can go ahead and call for taxi whenever you're ready. All right. Tucson ground, Overkill at General Aviation Ramp, looking for taxi to runway 12. Overkill, Tucson ground, taxi to runway 12 via Alpha, exit at Alpha 9, hold you at runway 12. Taxi via Alpha. Hold short, runway 12 at Alpha 9 for Overkill. Overkill, read back correct. 
Give me a go where you're holding short of runway 12. Perfect. Thank you, chat. Let's go ahead and hold here. All right. So, again, you guys can see that it's not complete. You got complete. it. We'll hold position right here. Just let me know whenever you're ready to continue or if you need anything else. Okay. I had to let him give his response in. So, you guys can see that even if he doesn't give you the right response in the first attempt, you can tell him what you want him to do. This is where make chat becomes a very, very powerful tool, especially when you are learning. And even if he says something that you know is not correct, you can correct him like we did with the runway or you know the way that he was giving off the instructions. And actually, I have to actually look at that. I, I don't know that Alpha 9 is the current end of runway 1-2. I'd have to go back and look. But if I go back and I determine that that is incorrect, I can actually upload the chart to him. Okay, so I can say, hey, do me a favor and use this chart as your reference when giving me my position. And I didn't tell him where I was correctly. That I, I can't remember what the designation of this particular ramp is because there's multiple GA ramps. Like, for example, this is one of the major GA ramps out. Oh, you guys can't see that. This out here is one of the major GA ramps for Tucson International. There's also one out here off to the right. Um, this is one that we are sitting on, but I did not designate my position correctly. I want to make that very clear. So it's a very powerful tool. And it's a lot cheaper than a lot of the stuff that's out there. And it has so many different use cases that unfortunately, as much as I'm starting to think about this and the, and the, the more my brain's starting to go with this, it could become far more powerful than really anything that's on the market. And this could put a lot of people, a lot of developers in trouble as time goes on. Um, and at the very least, make them rethink their price points. So... I wanted to put that out there because it can do everything from getting you guys checklists. Now, when it comes to the checklist, you have to make sure that you understand, again, that it's only, it goes to the website just like you and I would. It just does it significantly faster. The other thing is if you find a checklist that isn't quite right, but you know what the right uh, checklist is, you can upload that to him. Okay, or it, her, whatever you want to call it. Like I said, right now he's my wingman, so you know we're, we're in role play mode. Um, the other th cool thing, I'm not going to lie, is you can give him a new name. If you don't want to be calling him Chat, we can call him Bill. We can say, hey, from this moment forward, your name is Bill. From this moment forward, you know, your first officer, your FO, whatever you want to be. Um, and it really does walk through all of the steps in a very nice way. There's still some training, some things you have to do. But one of the things that I have found, I use it for both my professional career and I use it for um, just about anything that I do these days. It's an incredibly powerful tool. And what I like about it is, again, you can teach it what you want. Okay, if it's giving you wrong information, you don't have to worry about learning how to code or anything like that. You can just say, hey, for future reference, that's not correct. Like from going forward, I'm willing to bet that anytime I mention Tucson International, he's going to know that the runway now is no longer 1-1 one, one left. It's runway 1-2, okay? And that 1-1 one, one right was deprecated or decommissioned, if you will. So anyway, I just wanted to show that with you guys. I thought it was a really cool tool. I'm going to keep playing around with it. You probably are going to hear him more and more often on the videos moving forward um, as we get into some of the other flight stuff. A little tip and trick that I'll also give you guys is it is an incredibly useful tool if you are into DCS World scripting, especially if you'd like to use something like Moose or CTLD. Uh, he can immensely help you with that and give you very specific instructions. For example, you can say, hey, do me a favor and use Moose, and I would like you to write a Moose script that does XYZ that you know sets up a combat zone you know or a search and rescue blah 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 at X point you know you can give him all kinds of different parameters and he'll build that script out for you and then if you don't know what to do next from your end you say okay well, thank you for creating that script chat what do I do with it next and then he'll tell you you need to place a plane here you need to set down this thing you need to title it like such walk you through the uh, all the instructions necessary and he'll build out missions for you too so it's a really really fun tool for uh, uh, flight information or uh, flight simulation and uh, I intend to really push this to those limits and as we get further and further into this I will continue to make videos and let you guys know what kind of powerful uh, and helpful resources I've learned to take off of chat GPT but anyways I thought you guys would find that interesting as always stay safe and healthy folks and I'll see you in the next one